Hey there, it's Trevor Turnbull here with Sports <coughs> Networker, and I'm pleased to be joined via Skype right now by Pat DeCola. How's it going, Pat? Going great. How's it going, Trevor? It's going really good. So, hey, Pat, I uh, really appreciate you taking a few moments here to chat with us. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Pat, uh, you might recognize his face. You might have even seen some of his articles on Sports Networker. He's contributed some great content for us. And when I saw that Pat uh, just recently landed a job with NASCAR, I figured we got to get him on the line, uh, talk a little bit about his, his background, uh, the role that he's currently in, and you know, hopefully help other people understand what it takes to actually break their way into sports. So, Pat, why don't we start off, first of all, by just introducing people to you. Let's, let's talk about your background a little bit. Whereabouts are you from? Where did you go to school? That type of thing. Sure. Uh, well, basically, I'm... Just from north of Boston, uh, for the most part, I lived there my entire life. Um, I went to school at a little tiny school in Maine called the <laughs> St. Joseph's College of Maine. Okay. Uh, I think my graduating class was less than 100 people, honestly. Um, but, you know, the story kind of started there. I was the, the sports editor of the paper, which had a staff of six people, maybe. Yeah. And, but it kind of leapfrogged me to where I am, just because... The president of Fox Sports Net, Randy Freer, he graduated from there, as small as that school is. Um, yeah. And it was April of my senior year. Didn't really have any prospects for a job lined up or anything. And the, our, our school magazine did a, a feature on him. He was on the cover. And I was like, oh, definitely got to get in touch with this guy. Yeah. So I just, I just sent him an email, said, hey, you know, I'm graduating in a month. Um, this is back in 2009. Uh, I said, you know, love to talk to you, you know, I'm sure you have some great advice, et cetera, et cetera. I uh, didn't really know what I was doing back then. I hadn't really sent an email like that before. Yeah. Uh, um, he reached out to me about a month later <laughs> and he said, hey, you know, we're working on this, this new digital initiative down in our, our, our main offices in, in Houston. Um, it sounds like you'd be a good fit. Hmm. And he sent me down to Houston a couple months later, and I, I wasn't even asking for a job in the interview or in the <laughs> email, rather. But yeah. it worked out, and um, you know, I spent ten months down in Houston working as an editorial assistant for Fox Sports Net uh, when they they relaunched or launched really uh, all of their their local sites. So you know, Fox Sports Florida, Fox Sports West, etc. Right. That was part of the content team for all those sites. Um, and that's really where it all started. Uh, I came back to Massachusetts uh, in August of 2010 to to work as uh, the New Hampshire Union leaders, Red Sox, and Patriots beat writer. Okay, it, which is perfect. You know, that's, that's yeah. exactly what I wanted my entire life. You know, I wanted uh, I, well. First, I wanted to play baseball, but then I ended up having back surgery in college, uh, so I couldn't play anymore. Wanted to write better after that, so you know. There I was, 23 years old, everything had seemed to be where it should be. Yep. Uh, I got a week into that job, and I was fired. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so a little That's adversity right. along the way. I had moved all the way back from Texas, and it just it sucked, honestly. It, I don't know if I can say that on this, but it, it was the worst. And uh, luckily, two months later, uh, that same paper, they rehired me just to work in, at on the desk just for, you know, high school sports and everything. And I, you know, I was there until, um, pretty much until I left for, for NASCAR. But in the meantime, just, it was just a whirlwind of, of freelancing and connections and, and finding out about Lewis Howes and <laughs> <laughs> just kind of following his direction uh, based off his, his linked working uh, LinkedIn book that he wrote. Right. right. Uh, I recommend that highly to anybody who you know wants to get better at life. Honestly, right on. it's it's it really did wonders for me. Well, thanks very much uh, for the plug. We have that book inside the Sports Executive yeah. Association, by the way, if anybody's looking for it. <laughs> so you're, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I sorry, can't recommend. It. Sorry, I think I didn't miss that question. Oh no, go ahead, Pat. I, I cut you off there. Okay. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so. Um, you know, I was writing part time for this the New Hampshire Union Leader, which is a great great job. Just wasn't enough. Um, you know, 
financially, so I had to freelance for other positions and everything. Uh, and honestly, it just every freelancing opportunity that came my way, whether it was paid, whether it was twenty dollars a story, I took it. You know, basically, I just took everything that I could, yeah. threw it all against the wall, and saw what stuck. What's what stuck really? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's really just. If I have any advice for anybody, it's just just don't say no to anybody. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. take as much as you can and sort out the rest if you get overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, so then, this past October, uh, I ended up getting laid off, like from that same paper again, and you know I was struggling mightily. Uh, I just applied to everything that I could and tried to get in touch with every p connection I had to try and find something and. I don't know how I got this NASCAR job. I, I applied to it. I, I've never, I'd never watched a race honestly before I, I started there. But you know, I spent hours and hours and days and weeks fine-tuning my resume and really kind of getting my skills out there, and it, it showed really. Mm -hmm. um, so they valued my my skill sets based off just what I had in my resume and what I wrote in my cover letter. Yep. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, I have a pretty pretty strong online presence. I think, um, yeah. you know, for my age and everything. But uh, they just reached out to me, and before I knew it, I was moving down to Charlotte to to, to work for NASCAR. Here we go, start a new life, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, you alluded to it there too. Uh, I, I have no doubt that a big contributor to your success in landing this job was obviously the social proof that existed online. Uh, in addition right. to your resume and your cover letter and everything else, right? Because uh, I believe it was the summertime when you had contributed. Uh, no, it was even later than that, too, because I think you did a series of articles around the World Series for us, too, mm -hmm. did you not? Right, right. Yeah. I did. And what other uh, freelance publications, what, what other things did you write for during this, you know, the last six months type thing? Uh, just just so many. Um <laughs> There was fighterjournal.com, which yeah. uh, a, a buddy of mine from MLB Network, he does that on his, on his off time, uh, which is MMA, which, again, is not something I'm too well versed in, but you know, I, I feel that anything researched enough, uh, you can figure it out on the fly, um, which is why I covered a lot of girls' volleyball. <laughs> Uh, There's an opportunity there, I guess, somewhere. Uh, yeah, I guess. No, uh, uh, I, there were a, a few community newspapers. Um, for about a year, I, I worked for Patch, uh, freelancing for them, for you know six or seven different towns. Um, there was a, a, a site called Twitchy.com, which uh, is run by Michelle Malkin of, of Fox News. Uh, it's a very Republican site. And very conservative and right winged and just everything that I'm not. But <laughs> you know, again, you know, you, you don't say no to good opportunities like that. And yeah, yeah. Uh, there was that. Um, there's you guys that I'm trying to think what else. There's just uh, <laughs> you know, I, I have a portfolio online that just has everything on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I was gonna say that um, I, I was just googling your name because I wanted to pull all the assets together to be able to. Uh, publish this on the site afterwards yep. too and of course I found your Facebook page we're connected on Facebook uh, your Twitter right. account LinkedIn account those are the obvious ones that most people have a mandatory everybody yep. should have I should yeah. say and then I also noticed that and this one is actually kind of a shocker you have a Wikipedia page and I'm assuming that either yeah. you or somebody else created it but I think it's brilliant though if whoever did it anyways because again it just shows that right. like oh this guy's somebody that I need to know right um, exactly exactly and then there was a couple other platforms I noticed too. Con contently, contently, Content. I guess. Yeah, that's um, that's my online portfolio. Uh, yeah. Which I don't. Again, you know, I just you, you send a million emails and then you kind of forget what, what you send. <laughs> yeah. And it, that's something that just got back to me, and they, it's it's actually a freelancing network where oh, they'll have they'll post assignments and you can pick them up and. Oh. Um, but it's also, you know, it's 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 a portfolio manager as well. So you ha you can just collect everything, and, and it actually pulls in your name from 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 the internet. So it finds all these articles that you've written in the past, oh, and you just, you click through and approve them all. Yeah. Um, but it also it verifies you as a professional writer 
there's a little badge you'll see that says pro, I think it's, it says, um, and not everybody has that. So they, you know, if you get that badge, it kind of legitimizes your name essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, I, that's something that you should look into if, if anybody's out there that wants to kind of do exactly that, it, which yeah. I highly recommend. No, for sure. It's actually, yeah. some, I, I just come across it when I did this Google search, like I say, and it's something that we'll look yeah. into here too, because obviously, you know, anything that we can do to help increase the profile of the authors that are writing for our site is a good thing too. Everybody wins. Yeah, right? exactly. So yeah, and there's like you say though, there's lots right. of these things out there that you can use to start building up the portfolio. So it's great to see that you've uh, you've taken full advantage of those. Um, so next question I got for you here, Pat, is so you got this job yeah. with NASCAR. You obviously mentioned you're a baseball fan. Uh, had never really seen a NASCAR event. You know, maybe <laughs> saw it on the highlights or something like that. But, right. You yes. know what? Talk about what uh, before you went into this position. What excited you the most, and what scared you the most? Um, obviously what scared me is, uh, my lack of NASCAR knowledge, right. but, uh, what excited me, you know, it was, it was a new opportunity. Charlotte itself is a pretty exciting city. Um, but as far as the job, it's a, you know, I, I got the chance to come down here for an interview first and I told myself that I didn't want to move again. Um, you know, because I, I was in the process of adopting a puppy and I had a girlfriend back home who she, she ended up moving down with me. Which yeah. is nice of her. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I told myself that, I, you know, no matter how good the job is, I'm not going to say yes unless I am just completely floored and wowed. Like, they're trying to impress me in the interview, not mm. the other way around. Wow. And I met with four of their executives that day, and they showed me around the office, and I, I was just you know, enthralled in everything they had to show me. And even though it was NASCAR and I just I, I couldn't say no. There was just they were offering just too much just everything about it. The, the office is just pristine. Um every single person that I met was just outstandingly nice. And and it has remained to this day, you know. That wasn't just a facade that they were putting on that day. Everything about NASCAR is just so friendly and I, I I really enjoy going to work every day, and I, I just can't speak enough about how great it is. It's that uh, southern hospitality, I guess, isn't it? I guess, I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, and I think too, uh, like I, I've followed. I, I'm not a NASCAR fan my, myself either, but I I yep. follow it. I'm aware <laughs> of it. Of course, we've done num a number of interviews and and kind of watched what they've been doing, especially around the social space. And I know that NASCAR, I don't know what exactly, I think, believe it's the most viewed spectator sport in the United States, I believe. Um, I believe it's second to the NFL, but it's it definitely in the top the NFL? Yeah. yeah. But still massive, right? Like ahead of the NBA, ahead of the oh, NHL. Yeah. So, it, people don't even realize that. Yeah, which is incredible. And I know a lot of people have actually criticized NASCAR in the past about their, their actual digital presence and their social media presence and that type of thing. And that was about six months ago I remembered hearing stuff like that. And then I started seeing right. them making all these steps and progress towards improvements. And, you know, obviously I think that was maybe one of the reasons that they hired you too was your experience in online publishing um, and, you know, in your current role. You say it's editor slash producer of content for NASCAR, right? So what does that all entail? Right. So, like, you make an excellent point. Um, NASCAR is really... I think they're about two years into like a five-year plan of like a, like a, just a digital initiative to try and you know engage fans across the nation and also bring in some new fans and uh, a lot of the fans right now are, are of the older generation and they're kind of translating it now into the younger generation and really kind of coming aboard with you know the digital revolution essentially. Um, so what we did the, actually the, the day before I started uh, January third. I started on January 4th, we relaunched our site mm -hmm. and from everything that I heard from people that I told that I was mo moving down to Charlotte to work for NASCAR, they were like, oh, that's really cool because, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of their site and now that I know they're relaunching it, that's great. And I was like, oh, okay, great. I wonder what was wrong with the site. And it's not that anything was wrong with it. All the information that you could possibly want was there. It's just it was, it was a little busy and not as user friendly. Huh. Um, so I'm not sure if you looked at the new site, but it is just bam right in your face. Like it's it's we have a huge image, huge title, 
Um, we make it just so easy for, for anybody who wants to see what they want just right right away. Um, and uh, in addition to that, you know, we just our social presence has just been booming in the past six months, like you said. And uh, you know, just this this weekend we have uh, it's kind of the the opening race of NASCAR uh, for the season. It's called the Sprint Unlimited, where you know it's just it's it's recent uh, champions of the actual race, but also last year's pole winners that race in this race. So. Uh, you know, while we don't have the Sprint Cup champion, Brad Keselowski, in this race, because he didn't win a pole last year, um, it's still a very important race, because it just kind of kicks off the season. But the, the important thing about this is that there was such a huge fan involvement with the, the setup of, of this race, where fans could text in, uh, or go to the site and vote, or use the new uh, NASCAR mobile app, which we just relaunched as well. Yeah. to vote on the format of the race, uh, whether how many laps it's going to be, how many pit stops the drivers get, hmm. the, the kind of pit stop that they get, you know, they change four tires, two tires, zero tires, um, even down to the fire suit that Miss Sprint Cup is going to wear. Wow. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, just, it's just another way to involve the fans. And yeah, yeah. one thing that I've really noticed since I've started with NASCAR is that the, the access that the sport gives its fans is just like unparalleled to any other sport that I've been involved in hmm. where, you know, somebody wants to talk to a driver, we're going to give you as many opportunities as possible to talk to a driver, your favorite driver. Uh, just last weekend we had, you know, our, our, our big thing in, in, in Charlotte where it's kind of like the, the acceleration weekend where, we had, you know, we had the, the Hall of Fame induction um, which fans could go to and just mingle with you know, fan like stars like Michael Waltrip and and Mark Martin and like they were just like in the lobby, just <laughs> like hanging out. Yeah. And I, I like I walked by them and all, and they they were just all signing autographs and just hanging out. It's not. It, I was just shocked. Like you would never see that in the NBA. No. And no doubt. Like just things like that. Um, you can tell that the sport just really cares about his fans, and they might have been a little bit behind um, to start with that with you know, the social media and all that, but they are so determined to really get on board with that. It's just, it's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it must be exciting to be a part of that, obviously, too. You're, you're going to be able to see the growth and the improvement happen while you're there working behind the scenes, which is exciting. So um, let's talk right. about your, your actual role then. What does a typical day look like for you now, Pat? Well, it's kind of a... Well, I, I realize that I, I do kind of have like a vague title. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that could be an editor, producer of content. Yeah. Uh, but a typical day for me, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of writing involved between, um, you know, coming up with the headlines uh, that are going to jump out at you, uh, you know, writing, you know, releases and, and, and rewriting releases essentially too. Uh, but also, you know, we have, we have four very talented beat writers that, that send their content in daily which I don't even know how they do. They're, they're just like sending stories all the time. Wow. They're phenomenal. Um, so you know, so we have to edit those, and then and then so we basically take it from from the writer's hands. We edit them, and then we make sure they get to the site. Like there's only there's there's four of us on the content team, and we do it all uh, other than writing the actual uh, pieces. So but four in addition, of you, uh, four of you, in addition to the four beat writers, you mean? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then you know, you know, there's I basically have three bosses as well, but four yeah. of us that kind of um, do my job essentially. We all have different titles, but yeah. Um, but then in addition to that, uh, I am writing for the site as well. I I had a piece up yesterday on the history of the of the race I was just talking about, the Sprint Unlimited. Um, you know, I went back five years at a time. And kind of looked it back at how the race has evolved over, you know, I think it's been 30, this is the 35th year of the, of the race. So um, it's, it's crazy how much it's changed, you know, even then, besides the name, it used to be called the, the Bush Clash and Budweiser Shootout and, and that. Um, well, it's definitely, there's one so, thing you know, about but, NASCAR, it's definitely a highly sponsored sport, isn't it? Everything's, everything's got a sponsor yes, attached to yes. it. Yes, it does, yeah. Like, which there's a lot of sponsors, yeah. Um, but uh, I'll also be going to 
uh, about four or five races this year. I go, luckily, I go, I go, I go back to New Hampshire once, which is nice because I get to go home. Yeah. Uh, I go to Iowa twice. I go to Rockingham Speedway. You know, so this it's really hard to boil my job down to just one main task. There's just you got to be flexible, and I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any social media involvement that you have with NASCAR? Or are you working primarily on articles that go on the sites? And um, you know, if you're not directly involved in that, how does your department work with the digital department on the social media side of things? Uh, you know, well, we're slightly involved. We're you know, we want to make sure that you know things that are going to Facebook have the correct thumbnails and uh, making sure that all the share components are correct and making sure that if you click share to Twitter that it's going to go there and stuff. Yeah. Um, but we do have, you know, a separate department that does handle most of the uh, the, digi the, the social media aspects of, of what we do, um, which is not nice because honestly, like, there's just, there's just so much to that and it did, like, if you combine it with what we do, it's just, we would get overloaded. But, um, but they do a fantastic job too. NASCAR, the at NASCAR is just constantly tweeting excellent content and, yeah. and pictures and um, that's that's I think they have about 900,000 followers and I'm wow. sure they'll, they'll hit a million by Daytona or so probably. Yeah, yeah. Because you say the, the season is actually starting here right away. This is the first race coming yeah, up. Yeah, uh, right? it is. It's, it's not a points race. It's it's just for purses. Um, okay. And then Daytona is next weekend on next Sunday. Yeah. But it's really, this this is the kickoff of the season essentially. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Well, it sounds like you're in a, a fun role there and obviously, you know, adjusting to yeah. life in, in Charlotte. I, I've been there once myself, too. It's actually a beautiful city. The, it is. The climate is probably a lot better than you had in Massachusetts, I would imagine. Um, yeah. I miss that big storm. <laughs> that's an easy thing to adjust to, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's maybe uh, provide a little bit of advice here. Uh, for people that follow Sports Network or that might want to learn from your experience as well, too. Um, you know, is there any kind of tips that you would give with regards to, you know, education? You know, should people go to school t for journalism to actually get into this type of a role? Uh, or is it all about who you know and, and how you can connect and reach out to them? Or, or what are your thoughts on all that stuff? See, this this it's really tough to say because... Tough to narrow uh, down one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like it's. it's I was definitely helped because I had a journalism background in college. Um, but you know, with sites like Bleacher Report, oh, that's a, another place that I write for as well. Okay. Um, you know, you don't need a, a journalism degree to write for Bleacher Report. And, but that site has really been coming along so well and, and they were just purchased by Turner and uh, they yeah. just merged with CNN for, I think CNN used to use Sports Illustrated, yeah. um, that I can totally see, you know, newspapers or just news sites really pulling from that crop of, of you know, the, the top Bleacher Report writers, regardless of background. Yeah. Um, so just as long as, for somebody who wants to write, just write, just do as much as you can, get your, get your reps in. Um, and just, it's tough because like, I, I do consider my path there were the, I had my lucky breaks, but it was really rough for a lot of times. And, and like, you just kind of, you have to keep your head up and you just, you have to understand that it's, it's basically, it's going to suck for a while, but <laughs> as long as you're, you're determined in what you want to do, you're going to get there. Yeah. Like, and part of it is who you know. But you still have to make those connections. You have yeah. to maintain those connections, and it's it's nothing's going to be given to you. you, you if you deserve it, you're going to earn it. Mm -hmm. So stay hungry is is kind of the thing that I'm pulling out of that, right? It's uh, you know there's a lot of opportunities. It's interesting actually right, yeah. to to hear you talk about Bleacher Report too, because it's it's a business model that we're watching very closely, obviously here at Sports Networker too, because right. they've created a very um, you know, they've created a content making machine over there at Bleacher Report. Right. And, yeah. you know, it gets some criticism from senior journalists that are out there. I know we had uh, uh, Morgan Campbell, who's a writer for the uh, Toronto Star. He does a sports mm -hmm. business writing for the Toronto Star up here in Canada, uh, talking about Bleacher Report in, in somewhat of a negative uh, manner. And I've heard that a lot from 
from journalists that have been around for 10 plus years. Uh, yeah. Mainly because I believe, you know, what you said, they're, these journalists that are in there are getting experience, which a lot of times is what is that's what you need. You just need experience, right? It's always good, I think, and you would probably attest to this too, to learn the basics and the skills of, of, our, of writing and, you know, how to, how to research properly and how to reference properly and how to write catchy titles and all that. But yeah. um, just doing it, I think, is the biggest thing that I pulled from that, you know. Yes. And, whether it's writing for other people or launching your own blog and writing around a topic, um, you know, just doing the work will will help get you on the right path. So, uh, right. no, those are all great tips. And like you said, like like I mentioned to you, there there's really no magic bullet, is there? There's it's a combination yeah. of everything. Just build it your is. network, learn, write, all the above. Exactly. Yeah. So you know how it's. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, so to close things off here, Pat, let's let people know how they can connect with you. And of course, I'll link everything up, but just let everybody know how they can connect with you online. Sure. Um, you know, I, I have an open Facebook, uh, so I love meeting people on that. Uh, I prefer Twitter. Um, you know, I think it's just at Pat underscore Nicola. Um, you know, LinkedIn, you know, I, I love LinkedIn probably more than anything, so... Are you seeing the stripes uh, going across my face there, Mike? I am. Yeah. I'm getting lines coming in from the yeah. uh, from the sun here. <laughs> we don't get a lot of sunshine in Vancouver. I'm not used to it actually coming in the window. So yeah, yeah. I'll just duck uh, down for now. Sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, you know, just just if you Google my name, it's you'll you'll be able to contact me. Okay. It, I'm up there. Perfect. Hey, well, I'll I'll make sure I link everything up anyways, Pat, because like I say, Perfect. you're you're represented in a lot of different places and yeah. Um, I'm sure you're to the to the testament of you know of giving back to others too. If everybody if Absolutely. anybody ever wanted to reach out to you and Absolutely. just you know spark up a conversation, I'm sure you're that type of guy too. So of um, hey, we really appreciate you taking the time to do this and uh, and really appreciated you uh, writing for the site. Obviously, hopefully we had a little yeah. piece of of helping you with your success, and we want to uh, wish you nothing but the best and and have fun yeah. with the NASCAR season here. Thanks, I really appreciate it. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Pat. Cool. Thanks, Trevor. Bye.